Welcome to the first episode ever of Netroflix. It's like Netflix, but better. No, just kidding. I'm just here to talk about film. I love film, anything film related. Movies, TV shows, music videos, directors, actors, actresses, all that good shit. So today, I'm going to start with great films with terrible sequels or prequels. Um, in each episode, I will discuss three different films, directors, or topics that are somehow related to each other in some sort of way. So today, I'll start with, since it's 2014, it's been 10 years since Mean Girls has released. So I'm going to start with Mean Girls because there is, whether you've seen it or not, there is a sequel to Mean Girls and it's a terrible sequel. So as you know, Mean Girls is about a homeschooled girl who came from Africa, played by Lindsay Lohan, and is trying to adjust to the public school life. The trailers, it, it looks like a chick flick when you've seen the trailers, but when you watch the movie, it's actually like a really great comedy film. But I'm sure you all know that because pretty much everyone has seen Mean Girls by this point in time. And there's like a lot of other great actors and actresses in there, like Tina Fey and Rachel McAdams and... You can name drop a, a few people in that film. Okay, now Mean Girls 2 is... It takes place at the same school, the name at least, but the school looks totally different. And the only person that returns from the original film is the principal. And instead of a homeschooled girl, we have like this broke girl who who travels from city to city like every year or some shit. And her dad builds cars like engines for race cars or something like that. And there's some, I don't know, they're broke. And this fool builds cars for NASCAR or something like that. And her dad is the original Johnny Cage from the original Mortal Kombat films from the 90s. Mean Girls 2 really should have been called like Rich Girl Problems because it really is the story is about a popular rich girl who is constantly feuding with an unpopular rich girl who is richer than her and they happen to live like right across the street from each other. There's nothing about the sequel that's memorable like the original film has all these quotes like Glen Coco you go Glen Coco and she doesn't even go here you know I mean all those fetch terms and those fetch little catchphrases and you know how fetch that film was there's nothing fetch about the second film. I mean, even the previews had to use the original film, like, to help promote this film. So, like, in the trailer, it's like, everyone's favorite Mean Girls party or some shit like that. Well, just check out this clip. You fell head over heels for the first Mean Girls. You're kind of psychic. Really? It's like I have ESPN or something. Now, the plastics. Who are the plastics? They're team royalty. Are back. It's so embarrassing how much they love me. Oh, I'm gonna vomit. It's their world. Okay, next on our great movies with terrible sequels is a cult classic called Donnie Darko. It's about a teenage boy who travels through time. It also has an amazing cast, including Jake and Maggie Gyllenhaal, Drew Barrymore, Patrick Swayze, Seth Rogen. Um, there's a lot of really great actors and actresses in that movie also. And like the story is so intricate and interesting, like people will watch the movie like 10 times over in like a span of three days just to try to understand the story. So it's like if you can get someone to come back and watch your film 10 times just so they, because they want to understand exactly the whole story, it's like that's a good film. And it was entered in the Sundance Film Festival, I think. And Richard Kelly wrote and directed the first film. And he's, I mean, he put in work. That was, it had an amazing soundtrack. The cinematography was on point. It was just an overall great film. Now the sequel, S. Darko, takes place after Donnie's chapter. The only person that really returns from the first film is the younger sister who's played by Devi Chase. Richard Kelly didn't really have a big play in this movie. I think he was like a co-writer. But I think he kind of used all his juice in the first film because the second film is just like, it doesn't make you try to connect any dots. Like, like someone tried to make a complex story, but was not a complex person enough to make a complex plot. 
like the first film. So I think Richard Kelly kind of used all his juice in the first film. And maybe he just didn't really, I don't know, wasn't feeling it in the second film. Or maybe they didn't involve him as much as they should have. I don't know. I wasn't, you know, I don't know. I mean, they try to use a lot of the same stuff, like the wormholes and the time travel. There's like some weird shit that happens with a car crash that happens like too many times. And I don't know, they tried to make it really complex, but in the end, it was just not a really well thought out story. I mean, you can try to watch it, but it feels like you're watching it for like days. It feels like days are passing when you watch that movie. I mean, you can tell they try to make some, some interesting characters and shit, but I mean, you kind of have like this twilight-ish vibe going on in certain parts of the film. Like there's Sam's best friend who's like super hot and then her the guy she like kind of hooks up with is like a he just looks like a douche like you know, he kind of has like that Robert Pattinson Pattinson however the fuck you say his last name um he has like this really douchey bad actor vibe when you see him on screen you're just like damn he's terrible but I don't know you know some people like that shit anyway so for my last great movie with a terrible this one's actually a prequel is um actually one of my favorite movies ever made um it's called smoke and aces and it is about several parties of hitman going after the same million dollar hit i mean there's a also another amazing cast of people in this film i mean we have ray liotta ryan reynolds common ben affleck chris pine alicia keys and uh, Chris Pine's performance in that movie is like probably it's probably like my favorite film I've ever seen with Chris Pine. So Smoking Aces 2 is actually a prequel, but it's weird because it's called Smoking Aces 2, but it takes place before Smoking Aces 1. So they call it part 2, but it's actually before part 1. So that off the bat is kind of retarded. It's the same plot only written very badly directed badly and also okay the dp does this stupid thing with the camera where he tilts it for no reason like there'll be no reason whatsoever for you to be tilting the camera and he tilts it for a lot of shots that make no sense and they try to bring back the tremors only they, they call them the tremor family and they're like they made them look like a bunch of retarded redneck carnies and I think they just try to like overdo the first Tremor Brothers, like they were trying to make them seem more badass, but they actually weren't. They're were actually really stupid. Also, the only person to kind of return from the original film is Laszlo Suit, who is also a badass. He's like a person who is like you can't ever find. Like no one knows who Laszlo Suit is or what he looks like. I don't know. He's he's kind of a badass, and um, he's the only person to return from the original film. And I mean his performance isn't bad, but it was just bad that he was back in the movie. They do this thing where one of the main characters is not only the protagonist, but he's the antagonist in the end. They try to make it like like a twist. That was supposed to be the twist, like the good guy was also the bad guy. The victim was also the predator. But I don't know, it didn't really work out that well. And they did the try to do the same thing with the whole young FBI agent. And he's, you know, confused and just trying to, you know, do his best to do his job. Also, in the preview, they had to use, like, clips from the original film to help make the trailer for the prequel. Because the movie is so bad that they had to, like, remind everybody that there was a good movie in the first place. Am I in some sort of trouble? <laughs> okay, so what I learned about prequels and sequels is that it's not always a good idea. And you know it's going to be a bad movie when they have to use clips from the original film to help sell the new film. And there's usually only a few characters, if any, that return to the next film. <sighs> Anyways, thanks for tuning in to Necroflix. I will be making more of these soon and hopefully you enjoy them. Uh, let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about. Hit me on Twitter or Instagram at Casey Necro and share your thoughts with me and yeah.
see you on the big screen see you on the screen see you on film fuck off